In last week's video, we documented the process and completion of installing the base layer of our earthen floor. We will still be adding a top coat to make it nice and level and seal it well against dusting and staining. We'll be showing you the completed floor next week, so be sure to subscribe and tap the notification bell. While we were working on the floor, we were simultaneously working on the guest bathroom and other projects, so we'll be showing you that footage next. Our channel is Red and April Off Grid. This is our first time building a house from the ground up, so join us in seeing how it's going to turn out. Now I will be turning the narration over to Red. Before we show you what we've been up to in the guest bathroom, I wanted to show you this kitchen light. So this is the light that will go above the island slash kitchen table that we will have here. And so we wanted it to be kind of decorative, but not over the top kind of along the industrial theme. And so we've selected this, searched for it online, finally found the one that we liked. It's kind of a distressed black metal. It looks a little bit like wrought iron, and it's fairly simple in design. The globes I really like. The globes have kind of a bubbling in the glass, and so they're visually interesting. I haven't talked about our table slash island very much. Part of our kitchen design, we, we wanted an island, but we didn't have space, or we didn't want to make space for a kitchen table separately. And so we decided to combine them all into one. So it's gonna be a countertop height island, and it'll be long and rectangular and shaped like a, a long table. And most of the time, there'll just be chairs on the outside and there won't be any chairs on the inside where the cook is working in the kitchen, but there'll be enough space there that you can put some chairs there and surround the table. So we think it'll be a nice dual purpose item. I also plan to make it myself out of some of the salvaged hardwoods we have and some other hardwoods that I've collected over, over time, so it ought to be an interesting piece. I also installed some nice three-blade ceiling fans in each of the bedrooms. We really like having ceiling fans. They're a low-energy way to control temperature. Now moving on to the guest bathroom, we've already installed the tile for the backsplash. Unfortunately, I went ahead and put it in thinking that I could seal around the edge with just some kind of a caulk or a grout or something along those lines. And I realized after I got the tile up that that would look horrible. It would just be a totally unfinished transition. You know, I needed some, something to finish the edge with. So we started researching it and realized that they make a aluminum strip that's especially made for it. And so we purchased some. So this is a bullnose shape. It's meant to be installed before the tile, and so I'm having to do some workarounds to, to install it after the tile. This isn't the way you're supposed to do it, but I think this is going to work and look nice. This aluminum strip has a nice a chrome look. It's a nice shiny metal, which really goes with the metal accents in the tile, and will go with other accents in the bathroom, so we think it'll look really nice. I was able to use some strong adhesive and glue it in place, and that worked great. The hardest part was getting those 45 miters correct, and I just used a saw to cut it and then used a file to get those just right. With those in place, I'm ready to put in the grout. We're using a dark gray unsanded grout here, and I'm just putting it on and then scraping it in with a little squeegee, and that seems to be working very well. I might mention, too, that we found this tile in a discount section at the store. It was less than $4 a square foot, which is really cheap for this type of decorative tile. We really like it, and so we bought enough for this backsplash and as accents for the tub surround. Moving on to the tub surround now, when I was doing the backsplash, I had some extra mortar, and so I went ahead and taped the joints in the tub, got those joints all sealed up. You just use a fiberglass mesh tape and then go over that with mortar and try to leave a smooth surface. We like those metal edging strips so much that we decided to use them in the shower as well. We actually like the idea of having metal showing around the edges of the tile. It gives it a nice, I think it goes with kind of a mid-century modern type feel to have that, that metal showing. It's just a nice finish and it's a whole lot more cost effective. These particular strips that I'm using now are like 10 or $11 for, I believe it's an 8 foot strip. And so that's, it's a lot lower cost than buying special tile for the edging. So anyway, I'm, I'm putting that on now. We're, we're thinking ahead this time and we're putting it on before the tile, which is how you're supposed to do it. So it has an L-shaped profile and you can see on one side it's got little holes in it. And you just basically glue it and then stick it on. And I think those holes are there so that the mortar and stuff can adhere to it and it kind of locks it all into place. 
This particular strip has an L-shaped profile with just one flat edge that'll be visible at the edge of the tile. It's a little different than the stuff that we used on the backsplash, which was a bull nose, so it kind of rounded in to the edge of the tile. But I think this will work perfect for what we're doing here. Here I'm just marking the cutout for that shower head piece of pipe there. And now I'm installing it in place. I, I, what I did was I put some glue, stuck it on, and then I actually used a little tape too, just to make sure it held on because I wasn't fully confident in the glue, although it turned out there was no need for that. The glue was great. Well, that went fairly quickly, and I have the perimeter in place, and so I'm ready to start on the tile layouts. That's what I'm doing here. Just making a little drawing of how I want the tile to be, and so now I'm laying it out on the floor, and you can get an idea of what it's going to look like up on the wall. Also helps me to not make any mistakes as I'm starting to mark and cut my tile. We picked up these tiles a while back during a trip to Tucson when we stopped at a used and liquidated building material store. These tiles were marked way down. They were less than a dollar a foot, and we like the color and style, good, long, hard-wearing porcelain tiles, and so we decided to go for it. But that is one reason also that I needed to use the metal trim is because, you know, you can no longer get edge pieces for this type of tile. April's been working on the grout joints here. She's actually put three coats of this grout sealer on there to seal that up real nice. And we're finally ready to remove this protective paper that we've had on and get a good look at how it how this tile goes with this mahogany countertop. We really love the look. There's just some brown tones in the tile itself that tie in nicely to the mahogany top. I made this mahogany top out of some hardwood that I've collected over the years, and we show the process in some of our previous videos. Back to the shower stall. I've been working on this just as I had time for an hour or two at the end of the day, usually after we've been putting in that earthen floor. And so what has been working well is actually just to take measurements of the next six or eight tiles that I need to put in, come outside, cut all those tiles, get a nice batch of tiles ready, and just do that one batch and then clean it up and then I'm done for the day. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm cutting out according to my list, getting ready to do another batch. Once I get all these cut, I'll mix up a good sized batch of mortar, as much as I think it'll take to do this job, and then I'll get started. And I'm getting ready to actually install some of these tiles here. You can see the design that I'm working on here. I'm kind of randomly, but not totally randomly, putting in some half pieces of that decorative tile. So it comes in one by one pieces and I, I cut it in half. So I've got a six inch tall piece that's the same width as these other tiles. And I'm putting that six inch piece in, in a random but not so random placement to try to achieve something that's appealing to the eye. So I laid it all out on my little paper and now I'm just putting it in according to that plan. Here you can see I'm putting one of those pieces in. These are a little challenging to get pieced in. I always have to put a lot of spacers in between them to get the little tiles to separate and not kind of close in on each other, especially if I put another piece of tile on top and it there's a little weight bearing down. I also decided to add the metal edging anywhere there's an edge. So that includes this little step out section. I did it there and also some more around the window. Back to the vanity. It's time to set the sink in place. I'm just getting ready to do a test fit here. I put it down and see how it looks. I did use the template here to cut this hole originally, but it's not fitting perfectly. It's not going down all the way, and I'm wondering why. I've actually installed one of these before and it fit fine, so apparently it's a slight difference in the casting is what's causing this problem. In any case, I decide to go ahead and mark with tape exactly where I want it to set, because I know I'm going to have to lift this in and out, you know, maybe a few times in order to get it fitting in just perfectly. So I want this tape to serve as a guide as to where I need to set it so I can get it set back in in the exact same place every time. Once I have that there, I'm doing some trimming. So I had to get my pocket knife out and trim along the edge here just to cut a little chamfer. Uh, like I say, because their hole was the template, you know, didn't put the hole in quite exactly the right place. So I put a little 45 on there and I'm getting ready to do another test fit here, setting it in place. So now the base is going all the way through, but what I'm finding is that the perimeter is not level. The perimeter is rough, and so it's not sitting down evenly on my countertop. So I'm going to have to trim the countertop. It's easier than trying to grind down the porcelain on the underneath of the sink. And so I ended up taking it on and off several times and getting my pocket knife out and whittling in some areas in order to make it sit down flush and evenly on the surface. 
Once I was happy with the fit, I took it into the kitchen where I have a work table there set up to install all the fittings and everything. You have to install the drain first, or it's recommended that you install the drain first and actually the faucet itself before you install the sink in place. I'm using a faucet here that is the same brand as the sink and also the same brand as the one we used in the tub. It's a black faucet, so it all matches, the style all goes together. This is a three-hole, so it, it doesn't have a base. Each component actually fits directly to the sink, so it's a, it's a little more sophisticated look, I think. This was actually a really nice quality product. Uh, solid brass components underneath all went together, and it was a really nicely designed faucet, easy to install. The sink is now ready to install. I'm putting a bead of silicone all around the perimeter. That's actually all that holds this sink in place is the silicone around the perimeter, the back and the bottom. There's no other clamps or anything. And I found that it's completely sufficient. It's very well secured, especially since I had to whittle parts where it sets down into. So it's, it's very solid. In any case, it's set down in place. It's looking good. I then put a light bead of silicone around the bottom and I'm wiping that off now. And next I'll put a bead of silicone around the back. In order to protect the tile, we put another extra layer of tape kind of around both sides so that we can just put the silicone bead in, wipe it off, and then you peel that tape and you get a nice finished surface. So that works really good if you have kind of a tricky spot that you need to put a silicone bead into. As soon as that silicone is in, I like to remove the tape as soon as possible while the silicone's still wet. And if you do it right, you get a nice clean line along where, the, where you remove the tape. So this is all looking pretty good. I'm removing it here. I did see that there were a couple of areas where there wasn't quite enough silicone. It didn't look even. And so I'm going back in. I put some more tape down and I'm putting in just a little bit more silicone along that edge to, to make it look clean and crisp. So to add a little bit more to this edge as well, we're just using a clear silicone here. We found that that has an unobtrusive appearance. Looks real nice. So Red has been working on the tile in the bathtub, but I haven't got a whole lot of footage of it, but he's been working on that. I think he's drilling the holes right now for the faucets. So we'll go check it out. Well, I've tiled up to the faucets and I'm at the piece now where I need to drill the holes to fit in around those three pipes that come out of the wall for the faucet. And the way it fell, all three of those holes are on the same piece. And so I'm really nervous. I have a limited amount of these pieces. We didn't buy a lot of extra. And so I'm really worried about breaking these. I've already broke one and I don't, I'm not sure that I'll have enough if I break this one. So it's a little bit stressful here. I had to buy a special diamond bit hole saw for this. So this is a special tool that about just for this purpose. It seems to be working okay, but I'm really stressed that I'm going to break it as I finish piercing the porcelain. That's always the dangerous bit as you're finishing your cut and going through the, You can see how it jerked right there. That's scary. That's how it broke the first piece. But I've got this one through. Just a couple more to go. I might mention also that I had to use a separate bit to make the pilot hole for this hole saw. The hole saw didn't come with its own pilot bit. And now back inside for the all-important test fit. I'm really hoping this fits. I hope I did my measurement right. I, I don't have a lot of extra pieces here, so I'm really hoping this works out okay. And it is. I have a little bit of clearance around all the pipes, so I'm not in a bind. I'm not touching anywhere. So this is going to work out perfect. That piece of galvanized pipe that you see there is just a placeholder. I had to order a brass piece that was a very specific length and it hasn't come in yet. The tile is now all finished up and I'm ready to grout. Here's a little shot of me grouting. This was a messy, miserable process that actually took a really long time and was extremely unpleasant, but I'm glad it's over. We used the same grout, by the way, as we did on the backsplash, so it all matches. And now April has come in. She's doing one final wipe down and clean before she seals the grout. April put three coats of sealant on the grout, and that pretty much finishes up the tile portion of this. So excited. We're ready to clean up and remove the tape. Remove that plastic and see how it looks with the tub itself. Some of the tape around the base of the tile was a real pain to get out. I had put it too far in under the tile and so some of it got stuck underneath there. And so it was a bit of a hassle. So it took a little bit. Had to get my knife out a few times and kind of pry some of that loose. Anyway, got it out and this is all looking good. It's always nice to peel the tape off and see what it looks like without the tape. It's an exciting part of the process. Even this tape that we put around the outside really helped just keep from getting so many smudges on the paint and kind of protect the paint. So 
that all worked out really well. Also worked out good to protect the inside of the tub. We've always had something in the bottom of the tub, so when I'm climbing in and out, it doesn't get scratched. And so far, the tub looks great. There's no scratches or damage. I'm now ready to finish the faucet installation. The hard part's already done. The main core of the faucet is already in place. I just have to put on the handles and the shower head up top and then the spout at the bottom. So here you can see I'm getting ready to put on the shower head. This is actually just a shower head that we're using for now. We might get something later that's a little lower water usage. But since I had this now, I decided to go ahead and put it on. And I'm getting ready to finish up the handles now. I had those protected with tape. That came off real easy. And now I'm just putting on those back plates that seal between the handles and the actual tile. Put a little silicone on there and put those on. This is a really easy process. These slid right into place and just tightened up with a set screw. I still don't have the right size of pipe for that drain spout, and so I can't put that on yet. I needed a five and a half, and all they sold in the stores was the six inch, so still waiting on that to come in, but I decided to go ahead and finish this up as much as I could, so that what I'm working on now is taping for the silicone. I want to put a silicone layer all the way around the edge of this tub to seal between the tile and the tub and between the tub and the floor. And so I'm doing that double tape thing where I tape both sides and just leave a gap in between the tape that's the size of the silicone. That way you don't get silicone anywhere where you don't want it accidentally. I used to always try to freehand it and not use tape, just thinking, oh, I'll just put a little bit of caulk and use my finger and get it in there, and it never worked out. I always ended up with a mess. It never looked clean. And then I saw my brother-in-law use this double tape method, and it was just so cool. He put this, the double tape on, which is a bit of a pain, and then you put your silicone in there, squeeze it in with your finger, and pull the tape off, and you have perfect edges. It's so cool. And so I've done that ever since, and it, it always works really nice. Next up was creating a kick plate for the base of the vanity. This was a little more complicated than it should have been due to the fact that the plumbing that I have coming up, the rough plumbing is in really the wrong place. I, I didn't do a great job of locating it when I positioned it originally. And so it actually comes up in the edge of the cabinet right where the kick plate should be. And I don't want that showing. And so I decided to create a little step out in the kick plate that'll cover up that little bit of unsightly plumbing. And so that's what I'm doing here. So. It's taking a little bit, otherwise this would have just been a really super easy, flat, straight piece of wood, but I've got a kick out created, and now I'm getting ready to glue it in place. April has already painted this the same color as the cabinets, and so it'll match nicely, and I'm just using some heavy-duty construction adhesive. I've used this in several places in the bathroom. This stuff works really good. It's, it's the same stuff that I used to put on that metal trim. It holds just wonderfully. Anyway, I'm putting that on and it's in place and covers up that plumbing. So we decided to finish the bathroom out completely before we moved on to other things. So this was actually really fun to be able to do all these little finishing tasks. So here we are unboxing the mirror that we bought for the bathroom to go above the vanity. We found one that we really liked. The tone of this metal I think will go well in the bathroom. And I'm just getting ready to mount it. We'll be using two hooks to mount this mirror, one on either side, and so they have to be precisely located. They have to be level with each other and exactly the right width apart. And you're always kind of crossing your fingers and hoping it'll work. And we're hanging it now, and so far, stepping back to take a look. It looks level. It looks nice. We're happy with it. Now I'm moving on to mounting all the hooks and rings and holders and stuff that you need in the bathroom. Right now I'm working on a hand towel holder. So mounting it up by the sink in a convenient location to hold a hand towel. We're actually using a toilet paper holder for this. We like the shape of it better than the one that they had for a hand towel. The hand towel thing was a ring, and we like this, which is just a, a bar that, that goes horizontally. So anyway, I'm using that here and getting that mounted in place. These actually connect with the tiniest little set screw imaginable that's underneath, so fiddling with that there. And now I'm actually moving on to the toilet paper holder. We'll be mounting it to the side of the vanity so it'll have a nice solid connection. I also needed to seal around the window in the shower stall area. And so we're using the same silicone that we used on the rest of this shower surround. It's a gray metallic silicone that matches really nicely with the grout. Next, I installed the shower curtain rod. It just twists into place to create tension, and it's sitting on top of the tile, so it ought to work really well. And then I moved on to the closet to mount some shelves. I'm just putting in two shelves up top here. They'll work great for bedding, towels, and what have you. 
In the lower portion of the closet is the water heater and that water manifold, and it's rather unsightly, so I've been trying to figure out how to cover it up and make it look nice, and I've decided to build some cabinetry, which I think will work out well. I've started working on that cabinetry here. I've decided to build a two-part top that will open with a piano hinge and also serve as a shelf, and then there'll be a removable lower panel that'll look nice and kind of cover everything up. I just finished out cutting a thin piece of plywood for the main part of that lower panel, and now I'm cutting the edges. So I'm cutting the cabinetry for around the edges of that lower panel. Now I'm just using pine boards for that. I have those cut to length, and now I'm just sanding those down and getting ready to assemble that. Before I moved on, I decided to go ahead and get the pieces for the top made. These are the pieces that will open up with the piano hinge. And I needed something heavy duty because they're going to double as a shelf. And so what I decided to use here is actually the three quarter inch plywood that we have salvaged from the forms for the interior concrete wall. So this is like the third time I've used this stuff. We used them for ramps um, after the forms and now I'm actually using them, using them again in this cabinetry. It's, it's a lot of fun. So they're finally finding their final home here. Once I had those prepped, I'm moving back to the front cabinet face and getting that all glued up. I used a little wood filler and now I'm doing a final sand on everything before we actually put the finishes on. Now I'm applying some oil to that face panel and April is actually painting those top shelves and getting everything ready to install. I've also got to mention my little workbench top here. This is actually another one of those forms. This is the other form off the concrete wall and we found that it makes the perfect tabletop. I put it on my two little sawhorses and it makes this perfect workbench. I've been really loving it. I think I may keep it as a permanent workbench top. The oil is really bringing out the color in this wood. I love how this little piece of plywood we have here in the middle has those red hues. It's actually a really beautiful piece of plywood and those red hues go nicely with the mahogany. Well, everything is built and I just need to attach some base rails to put these shelves on. And I'm setting the shelf in place. It looks great. It opens up nicely with that piano hinge. I'm just screwing the back piece in so it'll be permanently mounted back there. And I'll be able to just lift up this front part anytime I need to access anything in that compartment. And if I really need to dig in, I can just remove this front panel. Here I am putting this front panel in place. Loving how this turned out. This wood is so cool. This wood is actually just some plywood that we had bought for some, some other purpose, and it just happened to be a beautiful plywood finish. It's, and it goes great with the mahogany. I love this stuff. Anyway, here's the completed look with the top down. It's a nice finished cabinet look that goes great in the bathroom, and then we'll also be putting a curtain over this closet as well. Here I am fixing a mistake. I'm putting some little mahogany wedges in because I brought the backsplash out too far. It goes past the edge of the mahogany there and I didn't like the way that looked. So I created these little corner pieces that bring the mahogany out to the edge of the backsplash and it looks much better. Well, that piece of pipe finally came in so I'm ready to put the spout on the tub. So I'm just installing that here. That went in really easy and fit. It was the perfect length. And then I'm also going to put a low flow shower head on. That's what I'm working on now. You might have noticed that I'm wearing a mask, which looks a little funny, but it's because we've, we're doing some stuff in the other part of the house and there's fumes in the house. And anyway, we'll be, we're working on the floor and we'll be showing you that next week. After that, we tested everything out and checked for leaks. No leaks. So we now have a fully functioning tub. Well, this bathroom is almost done. We're now ready to remove the paper. This paper has been on the floor to protect the floor forever. It feels good to finally remove this and get a look at this bathroom with all, all the finished elements and see how it looks with the floor and everything. So we're just rolling up the paper and getting it out of the way. And here's a little tour of our finished bathroom. Well, almost finished. Everything except the doors have been finished. But here's when you first come in the bathroom, you see the vanity area. And so we got a nice big mirror there and goes down into our vanities. So this vanity was really inexpensive. This came used with that cabinet set. So we got this almost for free. And then we made the top ourselves. Got a great deal on the backsplash. So this is fairly low cost, but has some really nice high-end features. So it has a really nice high-end feel. And then we even painted our own handles. Uh, to go with the black of the faucet. So it all kind of nice ties in nicely together. The almond color of the base goes nice with the honey color of the mahogany top. And that ties into some of the browns in the backsplash and the golden tones in the mirror and in the light above the mirror. 
And here's a good look at our tub surround area. So this was our own pattern and design. The pattern of the decorative tiles spaced throughout there, those decorative tiles tie in to the sink because they're the same decorative tiles that we use for the backsplash. So that brings it all in together, brings the grays and the browns in the bathroom together. We also have some of the walls in the bathroom painted a brown color. So we've got the brown and gray tones going on here. But we really like how this tub surround turned out. We like the silver trim all the way around. It gives it a nice modern feel. We like the look of metal in the home. So we're bringing that in anywhere we can. So there's some metal accents in the decorative tile. And then in all the edging is that metal. Like how all that's tying in together. On the other side of the room, we have our closet area. And so you can see the shelves that we've added in there. And as we look down, you can see the cabinet that we've added in the base to cover up the water heater and the water manifold. Also functions as a shelf on the top portion. And so we have a nice storage space for towels, hand towels, bedding, all of that kind of stuff. And that all the mechanical stuff is out of the way, but still easily accessible. And now we'll give you a good look at the floor and how all that ties in together. Generally, we like it quite well. That last treatment that we did with the linseed oil definitely gave it an interesting effect. It definitely makes it look very distressed and in some ways a little too distressed. What we found is that the areas where we had the paper and stuff taped around the edges, when we peeled that tape off and removed, unbeknownst to us, some of that sealer. And so in those areas, the linseed oil soaked in more. And so the result was that it darkened where the tape was, which isn't a real appealing look. It looks a little too distressed. Uh, a little too interesting. So we, we do generally like the look in here, but we don't think we'll be using that linseed oil treatment in the rest of the house. I guess also related to the floor, I forgot to mention that we still haven't done the trim yet, so we do plan to add trim in the future. We've built this entire bathroom at a very low cost by using used and discounted materials wherever we could. And we have been keeping track of all the costs, not only for the bathroom, but for our entire house. And we will be sharing those cost breakdowns in the future, so keep an eye out for those cost breakdowns in future videos.